respected mu'mineen, mu'minat, I would like first of all to start by extending and conveying my sincerest condolences to you all on the sad occasion of the martyrdom of our 10th Imam, Al-Imam Ali ibn Muhammad Al-Hadi Al-Naqi, Salamullahi Alayhi. Our Imam, Alayhi Salam, he was born on the 15th of the Hijjah in a village called Surya, which was founded and established by Imam Al-Kadhim, Salamullahi Alayhi, outside of al Madina. This was in the year 212th Hijri. Our Imam, Alayhi Salam, the period of his imama was approximately 34 years. His imama, it was one of the most important imamat because of the fact that during his life, the circumstances, the material circumstances became even clearer that due to the level of control of the central government of the Abbasids, it would not be possible that in current circumstances for the Shia to be able to help their Imams retake control of the Islamic Caliphate. As a result, even though through the knowledge of the unseen, the fact that the Imam alayhi salam was going to, that his grandson was going to go into an occultation, even though through ilm al ghaib this was known, however, it became even more emphasized based on the material circumstances. As a result, it was the duty of Imam al Hadi, alayhi, and then after him, his son, Imam al Askari, alayhi, to actually pave the way for the Shias to be ready for the period of Al Ghaiba. With that being said, of course, I don't want to repeat some of the things that were said in Arabic. Many of you, alhamdulillah, you understand the Arabic lecture. I would like to, to continue with some of the, of course, repeating just some of the main details, but then continue with some of the other aspects related to the life of Imam Al-Hadi, salamullahi alayhi. Our Imam, alayhi salam, as I mentioned, his imama, it extended for 34 years until on the 13th, or oh, sorry, until the 3rd, of Rajab in the year 254, whereby our Imam Salamullahi Alayhi was poisoned. Some of our scholars say that the person who poisoned him or sent poison to him was Al Mu'taz Al Abbasi. Some say Al Mu'tamad Al Abbasi. In the end, it was one of these two due to whom our Imam Salamullahi Alayhi was poisoned. Our Imam alayhi salam, he had a lot of and many titles. Some of these titles were due to some aspect in the Imam alayhi salam, some aspect in his character or some aspect related to his knowledge or for example related to his appearance. Some of the titles that were used for the Imams alayhi salam were used as aliases. That is to say in order to camouflage the name of the Imam because of the sheer security the espionage because of spies who would want to know what are the networks of shias who are on the one hand learning from the imam and who may also be plotting against the state as well with that being said our imam alayhi salam amongst his alqab we have al hadi al naqih al alim al faqih and others as well amongst the important details related to the Imam Salamullah's life, we find that our Imam alayhi salam for the final approximately 20 years of his Imama, he was called or rather he was brought by force from Medina by Al-Mutawakkil Al-Abbasi when one of the ill-willed people who was trying to get a place closer to the Abbasids to try to show them that I am yours. One of these people wrote a letter to Al Mutawakkil saying that the Imam alayhi salam was actually preparing an army in order to do what? In order to fight Al Mutawakkil. Now, Al Mutawakkil's army was where? It was in Surah Manra'a. It was far towards the north. 
And normally what happens in any state, especially during the olden times, is that the central, the capital, that is where the most power is. That is where the army is going to be based. Now in the peripheries, that is to say in the areas that extend, you do not have that much strength. So Al-Mutawakkil was always afraid. And of course he knew from the, bio, from the history of his father and others that this household is the only household that can actually topple our claim and that can topple our rule. He sends a letter to the Imam Ali salam saying, I've heard so, so, and so. The Imam responds, of course, that no, this is not true. The person is lying to you. But then Al-Mutawakkil, again, very, very sly and cunning. He said that no, but Amir al muminin meaning himself, Ma'adallah. That I want to, I really miss you. I would like to, for you to be in my proximity, for you to be here with us. At that, the Imam salam, was forced and he was taken over there. Now, of course, if you look at the Abbasid methodology or approach to dealing with the Imams salam, from the time that they took power, the only Imam salam, who was left in Medina and in the end also assassinated in Medina was Imam al-Sadiq Otherwise, all of the Imams after him have a look. The Abbasid had established a policy that if we feel that the household has become a threat to us, we will call that person, that Imam, to be near us and then they will wipe him out. Imam al Qadim Salamullah Alayhi, 14 years in prison. He was poisoned in Baghdad. Imam al Ruda Salamullah Alayhi, in Maru, in Khurasan, buried in Sanabad. Today we call it Mashhad. And, 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 and. So this also applied to Imam al Al Hadi al Naqi Salamullah Alayhi as well. If we were to look at Al Mutawakkil al Abbasi, he was known to be one of the most spiteful and hateful people to Shias and to Ahl al-Bayt During that time, the time of Imam al-Hadi this was a time in which we had so many ziyarat that were being written, that were being taught to the Shias. Now amongst the most central ziyarat to Shia from that very beginning was the ziyarat of Sayyidah Shuhada sallallahu alayhi with that being said during not only the main seasons Muharram etc but even in general people would always flock to go and visit Al-Mutawakkil al-Abbasi would have people sitting on the roads his own spies his own army and anybody coming from Karbala they would they would kill them. Rather, this wasn't enough. Why? Because even with people, with Shias, being threatened with murder, Shias would still continue to go over there. As a result, Al-Mutawakkil Al-Abbasi, he took the decision to demolish the shrine of Imam Hussein Sallallahu Alaihi and so he did. He ordered for the shrine that was built to be demolished. Then he ordered also for the grave to be, to be covered, to be flattened. And then he also ordered for the Furat River to also be brought a tributary from it in order to drown the grave to that extent. However, through a miracle, the river Furat, it came around the grave and it formed a kind of a rectangle around the grave. This is why today we call within the shrine near the area around the grave, we call it Al Ha'ir Al Husseini. Ha'ir Al Husseini is where the water makes a kind of a wall. The water becomes a wall. And so this is what happened. This 
title for the grave is from that time. Amongst the events, of course, if you have a look at any of the imams, salamullahi alayhim, it is always interesting to see that sometimes you have imams, the imam will say, the imams, alayhi salam, one of their traits, one of the ways that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala constantly supports them is through ilm al ghayb And one of the aspects of it is that the imam will always know what to say in the situation. And the imam is extremely witty. That is to say, you cannot bring somebody to debate the imam who will overcome the imam. No. This can never happen. The imam will always be the more witty of the two. His answer will always be such that he will leave the other person flabbergasted, shocked, not being able to say anything. Just the same way that we find in the Holy Quran when Nabi Ibrahim alayhi salam, he spoke or he debated with Namrud. If you remember the story, when Namrud says, I am the one who does what? Who brings the sun? I make it. So, Nabi Ibrahim alayhi salam, or oh, sorry, the, the event when he was debating with Nabi Ibrahim alayhi salam, telling the, 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 the Prophet Ibrahim that, look at me, I killed this person and let that other person live. So I am the one who gives life and death. The Prophet alayhi salam told him, okay, khair, no worries. My Lord is the one who brings the sun from the east. Now you bring it from the west. So he couldn't say anything. He didn't have an answer. What's he going to do? Similarly, in one of the nights, we find that Al-Mutawakkil Al-Abbasi, he was drinking. Somebody had snitched trying to kind of lead to the Imam alayhi salam being jailed or something. Cause harm to the Imam, said that the Imam and his home, he receives books from the Shias from different parts of the world. And the Imam has a lot of wealth. The Imam has a lot of weapons. So you have to be careful. When the army, the soldiers of Al-Mutawakkil Al-Abbasi, they went to the house of the Imam, alayhi, they entered from the walls. As they did so, they started to look, to look, to look, to look. They didn't find anything. Just books of du'as, Quran, etc. They didn't find anything. And they found the Imam alayhi salam on his musalla. At night, he was praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In this state, they immediately took the Imam alayhi salam by force to the, the, the palace. Over there, Al-Mutawakkil al-Abbasi with some of his people, they were drunk. Look at this, Ma'adallah. Al-Mutawakkil al-Abbasi, he tells the Imam, drink. What does truly alcohol do to a person? He tells the Imam, drink. The Imam tells him, no. My flesh and my blood has never been mixed with alcohol. He tried to force the Imam, until the end, he told the Imam, okay, I will excuse you, but you have to read me some poetry. You have to compose some poetry for me. At that, look at the response of an Imam, alayhi salam, always. And having the utmost effect. The Imam, alayhi salam, recited those verses of poetry, which were immortalized in history. He told him, باتوا على قول للأجبار تحرسهم غلب الرجال فما أغنتهم القلل that they were at the peak of the mountains being guarded by strong men however the peaks did not avail them did not help them 
وَاسْتُنْزِلُوا بَعْدَ عِزٍ عَنْ مَعَاقِلِهِمْ After so much strength and power, they were brought down. فَأُوْدِعُوا خُفَرًا يَا بِئْسَ مَا نَزَلُوا They were thrown and they were made to be put in holes. But how difficult of an abode were those holes. نَادَاهُمْ صَارِخٌ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا قُبِرُوا They heard a call after they were buried. أَيْنَ الْأَسِرَّةُ وَالْتِّجَانُ وَالْحُلَلُ Where are those cushions, those luxurious cushions that you were sitting on, and your crowns, and all of your decorations and adornments that you would wear? Where are those faces that were full in comfort? Those faces that used to be veiled. If someone would want to come and see that person, they would be veils. Not anybody could see the Khalifa. عَنْهُمْ حِينَ سَاءَ لَهُمْ When they couldn't respond because it was difficult for them, the grave responded on their behalf. Saying what? تِلْكَ الْوُجُوهُ عَلَيْهَا الدُّودُ يَقْتَتِلُ Those faces, the worms are fighting over those faces. Fighting each other. For what? قَدْ طَالَمَا أَكَلُوا دَهْرًا for a long period of time, they would eat and drink lavishly. Every tasty and delicious thing they would eat and drink. After eating in this lavish feast that they used to have, now they have been eaten. وَطَالَمَا عَمَرُ دُورًا لِتَحْصُنَهُمْ فَفَارَقُوا الدُّورَ وَالْأَهْلِينَ وَانْتَقَلُوا They would build homes in order for them to be kept safe. Palaces, castles. Now they have left those homes. They have left their families and they have moved on. وَطَالَمَا كَنَزُوا الْأَمْوَالَ وَالْدَّخَرُوا Such a long time that they would constantly Hoard gold and wealth. فخلفوها على الأعداء وارتحلوا. And now they have left it for their enemies, and they have departed. أضحت منازلهم قفرا معطلة. Their homes have become empty. Nobody goes and visits them. They are left abandoned. وساكنوها إلى الأجداد قد رحلوا. And those inhabitants of those homes, they have now moved on to their graves and they have departed. The Imam says these verses of poetry. And imagine just this sight. And this is something that each and every one of us should remember. In the grave. This is what is going to become of us. When Al-Mutawakkil Al-Abbasi saw this. He dropped even though he was drunk, but all of a sudden, this was such a huge shock for him that he dropped his cup from his hand. And then he ordered for the Imam to be honored and he apologized to him because he awoke from his intoxication. This is the effect of the knowledge of an Imam. Salamullahi alayhi. Mu'mineen, I ask you. If we look at the final days of the life of our Imam Al-Hadi Salamullahi Alayhi Our Imam Alayhi Salam One of the two Malayin They send poison to the Imam Alayhi Salam Who is made to have to eat the poison After it starts to take an effect on the body of our Imam 
after the poison starts to take effect on the body of our Imam. The Imam, after such a long time, being oppressed and being at the attempts of the Abbasids to be humiliated. This was the Imam Masoom, sallallahu alayhi. After he was given poison by Al-Mu'taz Al-Abbasi, may Allah curse him. Our Imam alayhi salam starts to feel the effect of the poison. His body starts to feel weak. Our Imam calls from Imam Al Hassan Al Askari. He calls for him. He tells him, Oh, my son, I feel that my time is near. He appoints Imam Al Askari as his Khalifa after him, the Imam after him, giving him the items of inheritance of Imam. The Imam tells the trustworthy amongst the companions, this is your Imam after me. As the Imam was in that final night, our Imam alayhi salam in his deathbed, as he started to feel the time was coming, our Imam turns his feet towards the Qibla. He extends his hands. Our Imam's forehead starts to sweat as his breath becomes silent and as his soul departs this world. La hawla wa la. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. Mu'mineen. All of the... All of the Banu Hashim had gathered in the house of Imam. All of the beloved people, those people who loved the Imam, Salamullah alayhi, they had gathered in the house. Imam al Askari alayhi salam prepares his father. He bears the funeral rites of his father and then he prays over his father as well in the house before they start to take the Imam's janazah. Oh, my mu'mineen, I ask you. O oh my Imam al Askari, O oh Imam al Hujja, I ask you to please forgive me for this comparison. But on the plains of Ashura, what was the state of Imam Zain al Abideen when there was no one to help him? And Imam Hussein alayhi salam's body lay on the plains of Ashur of Karbala without a head beheaded. Our Imam Salamullah alayhi's body was looted. Our Imam's body is trampled. Our Imam's finger has been cut. Imam Zain al Abideen has no strength. Who would be there to help him? For three days, the body of Sayyid al Shuhada remained on the plains of Karbala. Nobody coming to help to bury the Imam Salamullah. Ya Layta Feel Ahya Ishaq Saka Hadirun. وحسينون مطروحون بعرصة كربلاء عريان يكسوه الصعيد ملابسان أفديه مسلوب اللباس مسربلا Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon Wa sayalamu alladheena zalamu ala muhammadin Ayya munqalabi yanqalibun Wal aqibatu lil muttaqeen ya Allah We turn towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to ask Allahumma inna nasaluka bihaqqi al-zahra'i wa abiha wa ba'aliha wa baniha 
والسر المستودع فيها يا الله اللهم عجل في فرج مولانا صاحب العصر والزمان واجعلنا من أنصاره وأعوانه ومن المستشهدين بين يديه اللهم اغفر ذنوبنا واقض حوائجنا اللهم ارحم موتانا اللهم بحق محمد وآل محمد اغفر ذنوبنا اللهم اجعلنا من أنصار الإمام الحجة اللهم اجعلنا من أنصاره وأعوانه ومن المستشهدين بين يديه اللهم اهدي ثواب ما قرأناه إلى موتانا موت الحاضرين جميعا موت شيعة محمد وآل محمد خاصة المنسيين منهم ومن لا وارث له مع ثواب سورة المباركة الفاتحة مسبوقة بذكر الصلاة على محمد وآل محمد Thank <laughs> you.